Can we just say that this is just a, a mapper, like... That's, yeah, that's Uber Cortex. Hey guys, it's JTX here, bringing you a build guide for my bleed champion slash gladiator. It's been a long time since I made one of these guide videos, so I'll try to cover all the aspects of the build, including um, where I've taken the character and some of the uh, challenges that I've had to overcome to make the character um, to the point where it's got pretty comfortable for all of the content in the game. The two skills that the the build uses is it's either rain of arrows for clear or split arrow for clear. Um, I'm using rain of arrows for this build um, due to the new crucible passive tree and always you'll be using puncture for your single target damage to put a really big bleed on. Um, the reason why you use a puncture is because you attach it with um, snipe so normally before you use an assailant to give it the snipe stages but now with this league you got the snipe support gem so you can use a snipe support gem or salem i'll talk about which one i prefer in a second so you can see my character here um it is level 98 called riz champ um it's taken on pretty much all the content the game has had to offer and it's also this is also my league starter character so i started from day one with this character uh, and kind of geared him up all the way till the uber bosses in terms of ascendancy choices uh, i started as a gladiator when i just started uh, the league uh, I think Gladiator is by far the superior option when you're low on currency or when you're just getting a budget build going. It's really, really, really strong uh, notables. Send it's notables for mapping early because you got the challenger charges and you got the um, access to the bleed explosions from really, really early um, in the acts. So I think that's probably by far the choice I would go for leveling a bleed, uh, bleed character. I wouldn't touch a champion until at least I have the gear for him or I have a bit more um, currency to play around with to make the champion uh, clear feel a bit better. The switching from Gladiator to Champion is, I think, the better choice um, for the end game. I think Champion offers a lot more than Gladiator in terms of um, just raw defensive and offensive power. Um, the reason why I say this is because with the uh, Forbidden Flesh or Forbidden Flame Jewels, you get a lot of like flexibility in how you want to build your character out. So in general, what I've seen um, a, lot, a lot of champions do if they do make the switch is um, you either have uh, two possible uh, routes for taking your nodes. One is you take gratuitous violence on your Forbidden Flesh, Forbidden Flame, or you take um, the Challenger Charges one. Uh, so Challenger Charges obviously makes your character like a speed demon. It makes it really, really fast, but you kind of lose out on the 20% more physical dot multi from the gratuitous violence. But it's, I think, um, can be made up for with a pair of gloves called Hemophilia. Those also kind of do the same thing. Um, I think... That's more of a, um, I guess, budget like alternative, even though those jewels aren't cheap for either one. Uh, in, in terms of what I've done, I've obviously gone for gratuitous violence because I value the 20% more uh, damage over time. And I feel like hemophilia uh, kind of stresses your build in terms of you can't get as many resistances, you can't get as much life, uh, you can't get any of the Eldritch mods. So that's why I've kind of gone my route with gratuitous violence. Um, and on the flip side, you can stay as a gladiator and you can take some um, champion sentence uh, jewel. So you can take a Fortitude, so you have permanent Fortify on Gladiator. So I've seen a couple of Gladiators do that too. So those, those are the kind of options you can take. But from uh, my point of view, uh, you start as a Glad when uh, you have low gear and you're trying to go for a budget. And then once you have enough money, you transition into a Champion. And normally when you know you have enough money is when you're going to get the Forbidden Flesh Jewels. Obviously those aren't cheap. I think I picked mine up for a total of 30 Divines combined. But that can probably change out throughout the league, depending on the um, how popular or how uh, scarce those jewels are. But in general, I think having those jewels lets you strip, uh, lets you switch to champ because you can kind of get the best part of the Gladi Gladiator's Embassy, and you also get to get all the uh, juicy notes from champion. Now, in terms of having a look at the skill tree here, you notice that this skill tree is uh, has two cluster setups. This is obviously a very uh, end game uh, based tree. Uh, your tree will not look like this uh, when you're just starting out, especially if it's a League starter character. Um, I'll include all the leveling uh, builds and also leveling trees in the POB, so you guys can have a look how my character progressed throughout the, um, I guess, throughout the early maps to late maps to end game. Uh, in terms of uh, the tree right now, it's uh, pretty uh, stereotypical for a lot of the uh, champions and gladiators playing Bleed. There are a couple of nodes you have to grab. 
So you have like bloodletting down here and you have uh, savage wounds up here. These, um, these nodes are obviously um, really, really nice for bleed as well as um, getting some nodes here. So revelry, um, you need revelry because you need to get the reservation efficiency of skills. This is just like a no brand. This is like one of the must grab nodes now because they changed where the mana reservation is. And obviously um, you have dirty techniques over here to make your ailments do damage faster and you get a nice bit of damage there as well. Uh, what you can do early on is you can path up to Heart of the Warrior, um, potentially even to Born to Fight. You can go along this route and grab the Silent Life Wheel here. So this gives you early access to a lot of life nodes. Uh, it will make your, uh, making your character a lot more tanky without too much investment. Uh, and also uh, for a long time, uh, I'll spec all the way up through here to Veteran Soldier. So these nodes also give quite a bit of a uh, dot multi, which is quite nice. Uh, and then the other uh, kind of must grab node is towards here. So your Mage Bane, this is your, um, this is your notable that lets you convert your dexterity to suppression, which is great. And also your reflexes. So, so these nodes are pretty much a must grab if you want to cap your spell suppress easily. You could do it on your gear without this, but I'd say it's very, very hard or almost impossible without getting these nodes. Um, in terms of the clusters I am running, I'm running two large cluster setups. So these are the Fizz ones. So I'm running a Battle Hardened Force Multiplier Master the Fundamentals. Honestly, the um, Force multiply doesn't really matter because I'm not allocating it. You, what you want is Battle Hardened and Master the Fundamentals. You're just getting the third notable, so you can grab these two with just one point. If you don't have the third notable, you're going to have to take some extra points to get both of these notables. Um, in terms of, yeah, so I've run two of these cluster setups, so Master so two of these. So this helps cap out the resistances, um, and this gives you a nice bit of um, evasion rating and armor. So both of these also give Fizz damage, which is great. Uh, so for medium clusters, I'm running... Um, so increased DOT clusters, so Student of Decay, Wasting Affliction. So this the Student of Decay helps with Chaos Res um, and also gives you a bit of um, DOT. And same on this end. So I'm essentially running these two uh, medium clusters to kind of help out with the uh, Chaos Res because Chaos Res does kind of become relevant later on, especially if you want to take on uh, some of the end game bosses. And over here, you'll see me be grabbing a, a, a Mana Reservation cluster. So this is just for mortifying aspect to make Malevolence a bit cheaper. Uh, you'll notice that this build actually runs quite a few auras. So, so it runs Pride, Malevolence, Haste, Herald of Purity, Determination, uh, a War Banner, and Flesh and Stone. Um, I've kind of uh, min-maxed the juice out of this build, trying to fit in as many auras as possible. I think um, if you are running a champion, you kind of want to get that value with stacking as many auras as possible. Uh, in terms of the reservation and how you fix a lot of the uh, reservation issues, uh, I'm using an Owl's Uprising. Um, so also uprising lets you reserve a single aura um, with no like cost, so either haste or determination or malevolence. Uh, initially, I was running a determination uh, to uh, Owl's uprising with determination has no reservation. That's what I use for most of the game until I realized that um, after I switched to champion, I felt like I needed some speed, so I added in a haste, and it turned out um, the haste Owl's uprising has dexterity on it. And this build is quite dex starved because you need to use a 212 dex plus. So like most, most bow, bows take a lot of dexterity. So you need a lot of dexterity to cap out. So I switched to an Isles Uprising to help with the, um, I guess the, the stat pressure. So with the, with the dexterity made it the, like a lot easier to kind of cap out my dex. And obviously because haste determination, they're both 50% auras. Um, I picked haste because um, it just seemed to make more sense than getting some strength from um, determinations Owls Uprising, and you also get um, increased charges from the Dex one, or from the Haste one. In terms of other uh, parts of the tree that you can grab, um, I've grabbed an Unnatural Instinct here. This is very, very uh, min-max. I didn't have this for, I'd say, 90% of the game. This is only at the end to try to get some more um, damage nodes here, and also you get some Leech here. Um, this is kind of like really, really like pushing the build to the limit, trying to find out, like, trying to get as much value as possible. Um, I'll talk about the, the damage over time cap as well, because uh, this build will hit the DOT cap uh, relatively easily. And then after that, you're just kind of getting damage for pinnacle bosses, because your damage won't do any more on regular bosses like uh, Shaper or uh, Maven. If, if, they're not, you know, if you're not doing the Uber version, then you will not need as much damage. Um, in terms of the other uh, important jewel you have in this build, uh, you need to get a... Timeless jewel, um, and when I say need to, it's it's the value they provide is is, is, is like it's like unmatched by anything else you can get. Um, for example, uh, I have a elegant hubris here. Um, it doesn't really matter um, what um, like you see how commissions to commemorate Victorio. It doesn't matter who 
the uh, the note like the, the person's name is here as long as you only care about the notables in the um like the notables in within the radius you don't care about the keys done itself because you're not really taking it um so for example these two nodes give 50 percent increased damage with bleeding and bleeding you inflict those 10 percent damage faster so just with these two nodes you're getting a hundred percent increased damage with bleeding and you're making your bleed still damage 20 percent faster okay so this is one of the choices for the um, timeless jewels. The other uh, choice you can use is with, I believe, Glorious Vanity, the Vow one. Uh, Glorious Vanity has something similar to this. It's, I think, 27 to 30% increased physical damage, and it also makes your bleed still damage faster. Uh, but it also gives you access to a keystone. Um, that, that keystone, I think, it's the, the plus five max chaos res, and it makes your um, uh, chaos resistance applied to 50% of your ele elemental damage taken. That's also really, really good for tanking up your build. Uh, especially if you can overcap your chaos res. Uh, in terms of um, that, that choice, that's also good. It gives a little bit less uh, damage, but also um, gives you a bit more defense, but you have to kind of like cover that defense with chaos res. Uh, in terms of that, I haven't done gone for that. It means I have to get 80% chaos res. It's already making the, the gear itself, like it takes a bit to just really fit everything in. And if you're trying to fit an extra 80% chaos res, it's getting a lot of pressure onto your gear. Um, so that's the other choice. So you must see a lot of other uh, uh, builds also use Glorious Vanity. So my, I myself use Elegant Hubris. I feel like the tankiness of the build is already fine for all the content in the game. Um, you have Perma Fortify, you have like 60k armor. You, you, your, your, your build is going to be fine in terms of defenses uh, for pretty much all the content you're going to be facing. Now, in terms of gearing the character, um, most of the gear here is actually rare. You have very, very few pieces of unique gear. Um, most of this gear is going to be um, you know, either self-craft or you can just buy it outright. Uh, and it's very flexible in terms of how you want to go for the gear. The only thing that you'll notice is this build is a bit socket staffed. Uh, it's because you're running so many auras and you're running two six-link setups. So you really don't have that many um, like options for utility gems. So I have an onset ring here with my dash in it. Um, you won't, you probably won't get to this point of uh, like being socket staffed if you're not running seven auras. So you can choose to run six auras. Uh, I think I'm kind of going overkill with the seven because I'm using every single aura possible, I think, that can affect bleed. Uh, I think you could easily drop like a Herald of Purity or you can drop like um, maybe like like a, like a Pride or Malevolence out of your choice. And then you'll make it, make the mana reservation um, and, and the, the, the gear sockets a hell of a lot easier. You can go for like the seven aura setup when you have all the gear or when you have like, when you have like a bigger budget to kind of you want to invest everything in this character if you do like it then you can go you can for sure go for the seven auras but until that point i think having five or five or six auras is fine and having a little less pressure on your gear sockets so quickly to go over my pob dps i'm sitting at uh, 34.2 million um, bleed dps so that's with my pride aura at initial effect and that's me on sand stance if i set my pride aura to max effect it gives me the warning saying i've exceeded my in-game limit and if obviously if I set my blood stance, like it's not going to make my DPS higher because the highest DPS you can do for DOTs is about 35.8. Um, and a POB will give you a warning telling you that you've exceeded the in-game limit. So getting above this point doesn't give you any more damage. The, the damage can't be processed in the game any higher than this. So normally you try to build defenses if you hit this number um, because you're not doing any more damage. The only time it's relevant is if you're doing pinnacle bosses. So I'm sitting about 15 million uh, DPS for pinnacle bosses. Uh, I think maybe around 9 or 10 is enough for pinnacle bosses, given that um, you understand the fight and you understand the mechanics. Um, that's enough damage for you to comfortably clear the fight without dying, or just comfortably clear the fight. Um, even if you do die, it's fine. Um, you have enough damage to clear it without too much uh, stress. I'm sitting at a 74k effective hit pool. Um, I was tinkering with my gear for the last couple of days, so my Chaos Res is a little bit lower than before. It, this number should be closer to 80k with a bit more Chaos Res. Um, with, yeah, I have about 50k armor and about 20k evasion. Um, I think this is a fairly um, tanky character. Um, you're doing a lot of damage with your bleed. So it's actually um, pretty, pretty safe in terms of how fast you kill things. You're not kiting things around for too much. When you're hitting stuff um, this hard with bleed, um, they're going to be dying really, really quick. So there's a very little chance that um, monsters get a chance to swing back at you. Um, yeah, so that's my puncture and snipe setup. I'll go show you my rain of arrows uh, here. Yeah, so my Rain of Arrows DPS is around 10 million. Um, I'll set this to more realistic, so initial effects, go sand stance. You know, we're sitting around 7 million uh, bleed DPS um, for our Rain of Arrows. I think this is more than enough for um, just regular mapping and clearing. I think if I switch to a 
a split arrow setup, I'd probably have a heck of a lot less damage than this. In fact, I can probably find out here. So I'll go to Rain of Arrows. So I'll get rid of Rain of Arrows. I'll add in a, a split arrow here. Yeah, so my split arrow is only at 4 million. And that's, I'm not even running like chain or anything. So normally you'd run chain in the setup, so you'd have even less damage than um this. The reason why my um the reason why my rain of arrows is hitting so hard is because on my bow, um you saw before I have the 300% multiplier with um bleed. So if I import my bow here, and if I remove this um this notable crucible notable here, so it goes from um 7 million. If I take it off, um Oops, wrong one. Hang on. If I take uh, this one off, so there's two different mods, okay. If I take this one off and I save it, my damage goes down to two million, okay. So it's, it's like it's it, it's a it's a really really big difference in damage. So um, you you want to have this uh, note for sure if you want to switch to rain of arrows for comfortable mapping. These are just the general stats on the build. I have 100% um, spell suppress. I've got a decent amount of movement speed, and then yeah, obviously um, having the capped bleed D, having the capped bleed dot. That's the most important part for any bleed build. Yep, so this is the tree in POB. Um, I'll include leveling trees as well of how I level the character from uh, level 1 all the way up to level 90. And then th this, that'll probably be a gladiator tree. And then I'll tell you um, the switch when you make to champion. So I have gratuitous violence here from the Forbidden Flesh, Forbidden Flame. Um, yeah, I'll have trees for gladiator and for champion and also at different stages. So you guys can kind of follow along um, if uh, you don't want to make the straight jump into champion or if you don't want to just start off as champion i highly recommend starting as a gladiator i'll go over my gear now so for this character you need a really really um big fizzbow um so this fizzbow itself uh it's i think i purchased it on day two or day three of the crucible league for about a divine so i got really really lucky with this um the reason why the fizz rolls are, like, appear so high on this is because of the crucible tree itself so i can go over the crucible nodes that i have on my bow so i have the uh added like the, the flat fizz here so this is the highest tier flat fizz on node one and i have uh avatar of the hunt here so the, the cool thing about this is if i get avatar of the hunt on my crucible tree here um i don't need to run it um in my passive tree here so it's been allocated here normally you take um like what one two three four nodes to grab that um obviously our natural instincts giving me the other nodes anyway but um i had I had my Crucible Tree node a long time before I had Natural Instinct. So it lets me save um, four points to, just to get this notable. I think that's really, really useful, especially later on when you're trying to min-max your build with passive points. Yep, so and the third one, I have the Increased Physical and Chaos Damage Modifier Magnitudes. I think this is absolutely insane on um, just like Fizz Bows. It's just pretty much a 15% more multiplier on top of all the rolls you do have already. Um, this fourth node is, uh, is useless. It doesn't do anything for me. Swift Assembly. Uh, I tried for ages to try get a, a MAME. So Soccer the Gems are supported by level 10 MAME. That MAME is about 20 or 30% more damage in POB. If you can get a MAME on your Crucible Tree, that's ideal. Um, it, it, it's really, really hard at this point though, because I've gotten like, I think five nodes that, uh, I've gotten four nodes that I want. So just, I'm okay with this node being um, like dead because getting the fourth node might break the first rest of my tree. So, but if you were to go for it, I'd obviously recommend trying to get a main. And then the fifth one here. So this is the reason why I use Rain of Arrows in my build instead of Split Arrow. So this mod is Rain of Arrows and Toxic Rain deal 300% more damage with bleeding. So what this actually means is you're multiplying your bleed DPS um, almost by a factor of four. So if your Rain of Arrows is doing like two and a half million bleed, it makes it 10. Um, it's, it's absolutely insane for how much damage it actually gives to the build. Um, it makes it so that Rain of Arrows just outscales Split Arrow by a crazy degree at the end. I think my Split Arrow is about three and a half, and my Rain of Arrows has reached like 12 to 13 million. So like it, it, it's, it's outclassing the damage by a crazy amount. Um, you'll also be able to realize that at the end game, when you're fighting, I guess, like Crucible mobs or tanky rares or uniques, uh, Split Arrow just won't cut it for especially juiced mapping. You'll have to hit enemies with a puncture if you wanted to uh, kill like the like tanky uniques, right? Or tanky a single target. With Rain of Arrows, uh, the damage is actually so good that you can just uh, pretty much shoot your Rain of Arrows and it will shred through rares and uniques. Uh, you don't you won't have to hit it with a puncture. Puncture would be reserved for maybe map bosses only or maybe metamorphs or just something that requires like a, a really big single target. Rain of Arrows pretty much covers everything else. It also makes it a lot more viable for uh, Delirium. It makes it a lot more viable for, I guess, just doing like full charging your crucible mods to 100% and then just hitting with rain of arrows. Um, I think rain of arrows itself is quite a nice skill because 
it has such a large amount of clearance and you don't really have to uh, aim it as much as you do for split arrow uh split arrow obviously has um like the chains it has the um you have a lot of projectiles and it kind of covers the screen more it's i'd say split arrow is probably a bit more defensive but it doesn't really matter at this point with this character because it's gotten um so many, it's like so many, you have so many defenses on this character, you don't mind being like uh, a little bit closer with random arrows and just kind of like dropping it on your character, like around your character. And then you also get access to Val random arrows, which is really cool because you can just, uh, you can preload your, uh, I guess, a couple of like a couple of drops of random arrow before the fight starts, for example, Metamorph or for um, Crucible or even for like for bosses, you can just preemptively drop your Val random arrows while you're waiting for the boss to begin its phases. And it will start applying the bleed straight away and also applies quite a nice slow, so it's a bit safer. Yep, so that's kind of just a quick uh, overview of uh, my bow. Uh, obviously, my bow is really, really high for DPS. It's tier one uh, flat with tier two hybrid and tier three increase. And obviously, uh, I crafted a fizz damage over time multiplier on it. It's not ideal because double damage does nothing for my bow itself. What I would ideally want is I would. Uh, probably scour it, uh, prefix will not be changed, scour, and ash things slam to go for maybe attack speed, and then I'd craft dart multi on it. So I'm kind of missing the attack speed on it, but at this point, it, it's fine because bleed doesn't really care too much about attack speed. You just need to apply one big bleed and kind of count uh, mobs around. So attack speed isn't as important for um, this bow as, as it is for other attack based builds. So in terms of my helmet, so my helmet is pretty much getting as much mana reservation efficiency as possible and also uh, trying to cap your lives and your suppress where you can. So I bought the fractured base for I think maybe one or two Ds, and then I just slammed um, life essences on it until I got a suppress roll, and then I finished off with the craft with um, Eldritch uh, modifiers. So getting the increased mana reservation here is really really nice for preserving all the auras. Uh, obviously for the amulet, um, it's just a Owl's uprising with charisma anointed on it. Also because my name's Riz Champ, you know, it makes the thematic sense. Um, in terms of the quiver, this was a really nice quiver I picked up. I think I grabbed this for three or four Ds, maybe like a week back. So you're looking for, on your quiver, you're looking for um, dot multi and physical damage dot multi, uh, along with along with some life and even some stats if you can fit it in. So ideally dexterity or intelligence. Um, getting stats on the quiver is pretty. Uh, I think it makes it a lot easier for getting stats, um, fitting stats everywhere else in your build. So uh, getting something similar to this would be um, ideal. So having a bit of life, dot multi, and a, a stat. And obviously having like the physical damage um, like to attacks and damage with both skills. Those are obviously nice multipliers. But I, I would probably use the quiver for more utilities to get some like stats, get your life fixed, and then focus on damage like way later. So in terms of the rings, so my rings aren't great. It's it's it, My rings are essentially what I need to fix my build. So you have... Dexterity, intelligence on the ring. You need intelligence because you're running a malevolence and you're running, um, uh, like you're running enlightened as well. If you want to fit in more auras, so you do need a bit of uh, intelligence in the build. Um, and also, uh, you need to have the craft non-channeling skills at minus seven to total mana cost. You will quickly realize that um, having these minus these minus mana costs help the build a lot because we only have about what thirty four mana that's like available. So at this point, I can attack with random arrows uh, pretty much consistently for like, ages. But when you get the puncture, you can only hold puncture for like, yeah, maybe like two or three seconds. So you have to be kind of smart when you use your puncture. You, it, it's probably ideal if I get a bit more reservation, so I have more to work with. But I played the build um, so much now that I understand um, like where my timing window is to hit a puncture. So normally I try to um, only puncture like when the boss fight's about to start. I don't have to like channel puncture for like ten seconds, like twenty seconds before the fight even starts. Um, I hit it with a puncture and then I normally cut it around and then. I use um, Rain of Arrows to kind of get my mana back or sustain bleed on and then hit it with another puncture later on. But in general, you need the uh, non-channeling skills have minus seven, so you have it on both rings. Um, it makes the it makes the build feel a hell of a lot smoother, especially because we have a Mana Forge setup um, here. So here it's Mana Forge. So this is one of the new skill gems um, in the in the game that lets you kind of, it's almost like a, um, it's similar to an Asenaths where, where you're attacking with, uh, let's say, um, your skill, and when you spend a certain amount of mana, another skill that's been socketed, so for my case, the Staring Arrow and Frenzy, they auto uh, come out as well, so they auto um, target and shoot themselves. So let's say, like, when you see when I'm charging, you can see, like, projectiles coming out of my character. So one of the green ones, Frenzy, and the red one's the Staring Arrow. That just means, um, 
it's kind of automate your setup so you don't have to run totems anymore from staring arrow you don't need to um, run like a maloney's for getting frenzy it's really really nice I, I say this is a really really nice uh, skill gem for bow builds and the minus mana cost on these also reduce the cost of um those still skills that are triggering so uh, in terms of the rest of the gear um nothing too crazy uh just a chest with a lot of life and suppression um this chest was just pretty much i bought a i level 86 uh, Triumph on Lamela, and I kept stymming it with life essences until I got the tier one uh, suppress, and then hopefully I got anything like anything else on it was decent. So I got a little bit unlucky. I got a really low chaos res roll, but I had open suffix, so I could kind of add a bit more reses to it. I think you can make a lot of a lot better chests um, to this, but for purposes of the build, I think it was fine. Obviously, you put on the um, increased effect of auras um, on this, so with the Eldritch influences. I think I, I think pride is a bit better than malevolence, but since I got malevolence to I think like uh, ex exceptional, I'm not going to touch it anymore. Like, there's no worth me trying to like override it with pride. I think malevolence is fine. Um, so those are the um, two things you want on your chest. You want increased aura effect um, of your skills for the exarch, and then yeah, for either worlds, you either go for malevolence or pride, even determination if you want more armor. Uh, in terms of the gloves. Um, Fairly um, typical gloves. I just bought a fractured base with, with suppress, and then um, I hit it with I hit it with the uh, I think the chaos res uh, the chaos res resistance uh, inf uh, essence until I hit either another res or I hit a decent amount of life. So you see here I hit uh, cold resistance and then I crafted on life. Um, obviously, like some of the gear here, obviously is um, not that like crazy. It's 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 designed to be like it is rare gear that you can craft yourself. It's not meant to be like unattainable for like. Like you have to buy it or you have to make make a perfect gear. It's just more like you roll it yourself and then you use whatever piece, uh, pieces fit for your build. Uh, on the implicits, I uh, have attacks have chance to cause bleeding and a dot over time multiplier. Nothing crazy to say there. The attacks have twenty percent chance to cause bleeding. It, it helps out with your build, to kind of trying to like smooth out the curve where you're hitting your bleed. So I think I'm at ninety five percent chance to bleed with um, my vulnerability. Uh, it doesn't really matter after you switch to random arrows anyway, because you're hitting so many times um, per second in a single area, you're going to apply a bleed regardless. And puncture is 100%, so puncture doesn't really care about the bleed chance. This is just mainly for your clearing skill. Yep, and for your belt, you have the Slathers. This is kind of like a no-brainer. This has um, been the choice for physical damage builds for ages. It just gives you a crazy amount of uh, like damage to your... I guess your it increases the maximum damage you can do with your bleed. Um, it also makes the low roll a bit like lower for your bleed, but in general, um, it gives you a damage boost. It's quite a big damage boost. I think it's like 20% more damage if you're running this belt in POB. Um, yeah, so this just gives you potential to hit really, really high bleeds. Um, I think uh, you need to hit maybe, I think, two punctures on average in a fight for it to give you value. If you're only hitting enemies with one puncture in a fight, um, then maybe it's not as much value as uh, having another belt. But I think, yeah, in general, you're gonna obviously going to be hitting two punctures in a fight against like Uber Boss or something, or against like a Guardian or Maven. You're going to be hitting at least uh, two punctures. I think so. I'd say this this belt is best in slot. Yeah, and then for the boots, it's just once again suppress movement speed, life. Uh, nothing too crazy here. The implicits are the bleeding bleeds you inflict deal damage faster and action speed. Action speed is quite nice. It makes you run faster. It makes you channel faster. Uh, pretty much is like a 5% multiplier to your character's speed, so I love having that on the boots. Yep, so that's pretty much the gear overview. Um, I'll go over the, the gems here. So in my bow setup, so I'm running a puncture linked to Awakened Brutality, Awakened Deadly Ailments, a Snipe Support, a Awakened Vicious Projectiles, and Awakened Swift Affliction. In my helmet, I'm running War Banner, Anomalous Flesh and Stone, Herald of Purity, and Haste. In my gloves, I'm running Determination, Enlighten, Divergent Malevolence, and Pride. Um, the Enlighten support, this is only really necessary for running 7 auras like I am. If you have 6 auras, you could potentially just run an Enlighten 3. You might not even need an Enlighten uh, if you have um, enough mana reservation from other sources in, the, in your tree. So in my helmet doesn't even have an enchant, so ideally you get an enchant for like Malevolence efficiency or Pride efficiency. Um, that will make it a lot um, less stressful for trying to fit in the auras. Uh, for my chest, I have Rain of Arrows linked to bleed support, chance to bleed support, Awakened Vicious Proj, Awakened Brutality, uh, Maim support, and Cruelty support. So I'm running a Maim support because if I apply a Maim with my Rain of Arrows, the follow up with a Puncture from my uh, my single target setup, the Maim actually um, 
provides a bit of a damage boost to it because uh, enemies maimed by the supporter skill take 10% increased physical damage. So it kind of like synergizes well with my puncture. And obviously a cruelty support. So normally cruelty support, you're not going to really hit the maximum value on mobs because bleed itself doesn't hit very hard. Um, a lot of the times you're running like um, deadly ailments or you're running, like you're running all your gem links don't really add to your damage. So what I've done differently here is I've tried to avoid running, um, I believe it's, yeah, deadly elements because the deadly elements means you do 80% less damage with hits. I've tried to avoid that link. So my rain of barrels actually does a decent amount of physical damage. Um, it's like what, 44, four, like 4.7 to 26K physical damage. The reason why I do this is because you need um, cruelty. Cruelty's effect is based on the damage of the hit you put on monsters. Um, if you're hitting monsters like for like, I don't know, like 10, like 2,000 damage, you're not going to get 40% cruelty on it. So you need to have high amount, like a high base hit to make your cruelty do a good amount of damage. Um, this also synergizes well with my unnatural instinct here because I have amount of leech, uh, a couple of leech nodes here. Um, if you don't hit very hard, you're not getting a lot of value from your leech. So hitting harder is obviously good for getting your leech going. And in terms of flasks here, I'm running a eternal life flask of swaging. So this is just for um, any corrupting blood or bleeding. Uh, I had a Corrupted Blood Jewel in my build uh, a while back. I switched it out for Unnatural Instinct to try to do some uh, kind of really min-max the damage on the build. I think um, you can just get a Corrupted Blood uh, Jewel anywhere on your tree. That will kind of fix that problem. And you also have a bunch of Masteries now. For example, um, here your Armor and Evasion Mastery. So you, you're immune to Poison if a Crypt Helmet has higher Evasion rating than Armor, and then you're immune to Bleeding if, you're, if you have more Armor than Evasion rating. So obviously my helmet is all, all my gear, like my helmet, gloves, boots, they're all evasion rating bases. I would probably recommend going for armor. Um, these were just the choices I had available at the time because they were budget and they were very cheap for me to buy. Um, if you have um, enough armor on your helmet, it will make you immune to bleeding by grabbing this node. So that's what I'd probably recommend. Uh, in the second slot, I have a silver flask. Uh, silver flask has attack speed on it. Uh, I also substitute in a bottle of faith occasionally for bossing. This is like really, really min-maxing. I, I, I did 99% of the game without a bottle of faith. Um, it's, I think having silver flask here is fine just to give you a bit more attack speed and onslaught for movement speed. So I have a quick silver flask with um, extra movement speed and I have a granite flask with extra armor and I have a jade flask here with extra evasion. This is just the skin, um, I think from this league supporter pack. That's why it looks like this. If anyone has any questions about why my flask looks different, that's just a jade flask. So when I press it, it makes a little effect around my character like a whirlwind. In terms of, uh, Pantheon. I think Pantheon is actually really, really important for this character. I think people underestimate how good Pantheons are in terms of helping you cap your ailment uh, immunities. So I'm grabbing Brian King. Um, you don't get as much value because you're a champion and you can't be stunned anyway, but you get the 100% chance to avoid being frozen and you also get less effective chill on you. And then for my minor, I'm running uh, Abarath. So this changes based on if I'm running red or blue altars. If I'm running red altars, I run Abarath. So I don't affect I don't get affected by the burning ground. So that's a very common uh, downside for running altars. If I'm running um, blue altars, I'm, I, I think I'm grabbing the, the Vislatha, so I have more life flasks when I need to. Uh, this is also better for bossing as well because you get a consistent charge of life sources back, uh, consistent, consistent life flasks back when you're fighting like long fights. So this is really good for making sure you have enough regen to survive um, like different phases of a boss. But in general, yeah, I'm running either Abrath or Vislatha based on the type of mapping strategy I'm doing and ranking for the immunity to uh, freeze. All right, so we've gone over the main points of the gearing in the build. I've also talked about, um, I guess, the gear choices I've made. I kind of want to go into now about the, uh, I think the more finer points of the build in terms of what else you can do in terms of gearing the character. So I, I mentioned a Salem before. So a Salem is a helmet that gives you the snipe support, similar to the gem I have in my bow. Um, what Asylum does instead is it makes it up to, it's a level 30 Asylum and it gives you two extra stages. So notice how when I channel, channel my snipe, it caps at six stages. Um, Asylum lets you stack it to eight, uh, eight stages and the extra two stages give you a crazy amount of damage. The only issue I saw with Asylum, um, I did test it, uh, I think for the first week, uh, I didn't. I really didn't like the channeling to eight parts. Uh, like just channeling to eight stages, it felt very, very um, clunky. Um, it's it keeps you in spot for way longer, and also um, it makes the mana pressure that you have to hit eight stages each time a bit annoying for the build. Um, personally, because uh, bleed DOT caps out at about thirty-five million in 
um, in the game, you don't really need to go for eight stages if you can hit the same amount of damage cap in six. So that's why I don't really like using an assailant. It also creates pressure for your resistances, life, um, mana reservation. Like you lose a bunch of um, like like options when you run an assailant. I think um, straight up you don't need an assailant because your damage caps out anyway, thirty five million. Um, if you can hit that thirty five million dot cap with just a regular six stage snipe. You don't need an eight stage snipe. That's just, um, yeah, it, it feels a lot better to channel six over eight. Uh, okay, so the other cool thing I saw this league was the Strangle Grasp tech. So what a lot of uh, builds I've seen, uh, they've been doing, they've been grabbing a Strangle Grasp and they've been anointing like, let's say like two like normal, uh, like anoints. So like you have like Charisma or you have like Sovereignty or you have like just like like Whispers of Doom, just like regular, um, regular, uh, annoyance that everyone grabs, but then they also have some really weird annoyance, like annoyance that you think are useless for the build, like stuff like, um, for example, stuff like, uh, if I take this out, they run like Deep Breaths or Combat Stamina or Sanctuary. So the reason why they anoint these is because, like I mentioned before with the Timeless Jewel, it changes all your notables in the tree to um, like specific, for example, Joffrey's End. This is really, really strong for Bleed. So potentially you could have like Joffrey's end like here and here and here, like a bunch of places within the tree. And um, instead you just anoint uh, these notables where um, where like the really powerful timeless jewel notable is. And then you grab that on your strangle grasp. And then suddenly you have like an amulet that gives you like 200% increased uh, physical damage with um, like chance to like, and your bleed deals damage like 40% faster. Like, it gives you a crazy amount of value on your amulet slot there. So that's what you can do with Strangle Grasp. And then obviously you can try Corrupt it to try Brick it to turn into a rare so you get even more stats. I think those are like that's a really cool um, option you can do. Um, and then the other uh, thing I've noticed a lot is the Grand Spectrum. So I see a lot of gladiators grab um, the Grand Spectrum jewels on their, um, on their tree. So Grand Spectrum is like, um, if, if you don't know how Grand Spectrum works, it's, uh, it's a set of jewels that for each additional Grand Spectrum you have, um, it will give you, uh, for example, more effects. So one of them is like uh, you get one plus one to minimum endurance charges per Grand Spectrum you have. So let's say you have one that gives endurance, one that gives frenzy, and one that gives, uh, let's say, uh, life. Um, if you have, since you have three Grand Spectrums, it'll give you plus three to minimum endurance, plus three to minimum frenzy, and it'll give you like 20% life or something. It, it, it's, it's a really, really cool um, set of jewels that also synergize really well with the Gladiator Ascendancy. While you're at maximum frenzy charges and maximum endurance charges, you get... Um, more damage and you take less damage. I think that's a really cool tech you can do as well with the Grand Spectrums. So that's all. That's another choice you can go if you're trying Gladiator. Uh, with um, Champion, doesn't matter so much because you're not getting any benefits from capping out your Endurance or Frenzy outside of the base benefits. So for Poison, um, generally you can use the Evasion Armor Mastery I mentioned before. If your Evasion rating is higher than your Armor, you mean to uh, Poison. The other way around, if your Armor is higher than your Evasion, you mean to Bleed. Those are both ways to fix um, those immunities. Uh, in terms of what I've done, um, I, I actually stacked a lot of Chaos Res onto my character, so I'm not really too worried about poison anymore. Uh, and for bleed, I have a anti-bleed flask. It's obviously not the most elegant solution. Um, I did have the mastery a while, like when, when I had a good helmet with armor on it, um, which made me immune to bleed. That was um, That's probably one of the ways I would suggest fixing it if you're worried about dying to bleeds and obviously getting Corrupting Blood Jewel. Those are kind of the main points to solve. The other problems I think um, that you might encounter would be um, you might be stat starved. Like I said, you need a crazy amount of decks and decent amount of intelligence to make the build work. Um, you know, there's a way of doing it as well where you can get Supreme Ostination. So that's one of the notables um, with the Elegant Hubris. So it's not um, so it's not this notable. I believe it's like Kadiro or someone else. It lets you ignore the stat requirements on your gear. But you also lose the like so stats don't grant you any bonuses, but also um, you, like it like you don't you don't care about requirements on items. So since you're grabbing Mage Bane anyway, and you're not getting the benefit from decks, um, it kind of you're not losing out that much. You're probably losing maybe like maybe a hundred two hundred life because of it. So that's probably one temporary bandit solution. Obviously, getting the stats is probably better, but you could probably run that node if you're worried about stat being stat start early on. I think this build's been really really strong to play. It's probably been one of the strongest characters I've ever played. Uh, this is like, normally uh, I wouldn't play like a League Starter all the way until end game to do uber bosses. Like those pinnacle bosses are things I don't even imagine, like I don't even plan on doing. It's like just so like end game, end game. 
So I was really, really surprised and happy when this character could kind of actually, you know, take me all the way to the end game. And it's like one of those characters that you know, like I built from the ground up and then you do a lot of like, 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 you know, trial and error, like fail, fail, fail until you get to the point where your character is actually really strong. And that's like a really satisfying part for me. Yeah, so I think um, that kind of covers everything uh, in the build. Uh, if you have any questions about the build or if you have any, um, uh, if you have any like questions regarding crafting the gear, I'm happy to answer questions. Just you know, leave a comment below and I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Uh, normally I do, uh, I love reading comments from you guys. I love um, just, you know, just seeing if you guys tried to build and if you like it or not. Um, and also, yeah, I'll have more videos coming out in the future. Uh, I'll be talking about some of the currency making methods um, I've been using and also a couple of uh, cool new tricks that people I think haven't really caught on to yet. So be sure to uh, stick around for those. And if you really like the video, uh, you know, you can always leave a like, drop a subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.